welcome to the very first Starters Orders 7 Cheltenham Festival. It's day one, it's the Champion Hurdle today, it's also the Queen with a Champion Chase. We'll be looking at those two races in a little bit more detail during the show. Also, we've got a great interview with Champion Trainer Joshua Sutherland, and also another one with Champion in Weighted Leon Van Rensburg and Craig Allen, who is a returner from a few years ago. We've got stable tours from Graham Clutterbuck and also from James Shea. We've got odds from Vinnie Gerrard. Let's get straight into the action then. Okay, Cheltenham Festival time then, and it's uh, time to have a look and see what we think. We've got the usual motley array of pundits. How are you doing, Doug? I'm um, good, Mark. How are you? And how's life in Australia? So I'm um, looking forward to bantering with our special guest. Mm, should be good, shouldn't it? It's so much of a special guest sure. that Senor Stu is missing out on his siesta today. Are you all right, Stu? Well, you know, needs must. So I had to obviously uh, come and do this great show. <laughs> Which just leaves one introduction left, really, doesn't it? And that is uh, El Presidente himself, Mr. Graham Clutterbuck. How are you doing, great? I'm fine, thank you, Martin. That's good. Nice uh, to be involved for once. <laughs> we are not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I gather you've been um, banished to the caravan, have you, right? Uh, yeah, I'm in the caravan because there's too many people in the house and the the birds are in the house, so I'm not in a caravan on my son's computer. All right, okay, well, there you go. So you're in a caravan, I'm sat on a sofa, Doug's on his boat in a pond, and Stu's in bed. So, right, there we go, then. So, <laughs> better get on with these races, I suppose. So, it looks like a bit of an action pack sort of first day, doesn't it? We've got a red hot favourite in the first couple of races, but the first race we're going to have a proper look at is the. The big, the, well, the first really big one, the Stan James Champion Hurdle. I will give you... Oh, man, I haven't got the screen up. Well, I have got the screen up, but it was the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some, um, we've got some anti-post prices here. Well, early, early morning prices that have come through, so we can have a look and see what they are. Right, so there is the, um, at the early morning tissue prices then that we've got on this, and I think this is a potential steal. Wait till we hear this. Unendishkashitchka, 11 to 8. That's got to be, uh, that's got to be a bit of value, hasn't it? Understory right, Rebels right, at, yeah. Understory right Rebels, hand off. Yeah. Understory Rebels at 5 to 1. Dominatrix at 7. Megan Ziara and the Universal Rule are both at 9. Ella of a Dame is at 10. Buenos Aires is 12. Naziria Polcat and Bride of Doom are 14. Costa de Caparica, 20. Gun for Hire, 22. Regal Brave, 33. Wolfhound, 50. Billy Vodden Tapper, 66 to 1. And Lady Layla at 100 to 1. You can put a line through a lot of those ones towards the bottom there. I think you're, you're talking about the, probably the first... Probably the first three in the card. I think it'll be between Leon and Josh. I think it'll be his first two horses. Although, I know... Well, anyway, I'm going to go for the upset of the card. And uh, Leon's undelict, whatever it is, mm. falls. Falls. No, that's not going to happen. I cannot see that happening. That's, uh, no, nah, nah, no, <laughs> No, it's going to fall. It's going to fall, is it? Oh, be, uh, it'll be a bit of a, bit of a surprise if that happens. I don't, think I don't think it's looked like falling yeah. yet. That's it, so. Is that one that you're going to... Uh, I think it is one that you're going to come. Thank God. I find that name very difficult. Yeah, I've noticed I get it every week. I don't think I'm saying it right, to be honest. I think I'm saying it just as close as I can get to it, um, really. And the, pr the problem that I have with it is that the second word, that geschichte... Years ago, I used to have a German girlfriend, and her surname was Geschke. And every time I see that, I keep thinking it's that, and that's why I keep saying it wrong. <laughs> well, that's why I thought it ended, and don't tell me wrong, I've actually calmed on it just at once, and I think I kind of had a bit of a shite sound at the end of it. Um, <laughs> and then the leech, I'm, I'm looking at it now, and I don't. Please, Lee, I don't think I'm calling it shite because it's not. But, um, and then Delici gives you a shite? No? I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, it's been, a, it's been around right since the trials, hasn't it? So we should have got it right by now. But I think I'll just, as long as you call it the same thing all the way around, I don't think it matters too much as long as you're close. Um, Leon's horse. Yeah, I mean, that, if Doug was still commentating on the uh, on a jumping, I'm pretty sure that's what it would be called. As it would be called Leon's horse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you reckon, Greg? What do you reckon it's called? Uh, I, I I struggle with names as it is, as you know. You're my comms. I do not like names <laughs> like that. I just put, I just do what I can do with UG. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, is it going to win? Well, it ought to win. Oh, it? Right. I, I think that's Leon's banker, actually. Yeah, I think so. It yeah. looks, it's looked like it all the way through, hasn't it? It's, it's, I mean, I've commentated on it most weeks, and it, it only ever does just about enough. It's in the lead most of the way, and then it, it lets them all catch it up, and then it just goes again. On a couple of occasions when it has got beaten, just, but still, yeah. it still run well, though, so it's, it's difficult to see anything beating it, isn't it, really? 
won five times, isn't it? Five out of eight's not bad. And I think if you could, break, yeah. I think if you could really get eleven, if you could get eleven to eight with real money, I think you'd, I think you'd, uh, yeah. you'd, you'd be snapping it. it. Snapping the bookies hand off, wouldn't you? Really? Yeah. What, what about yours, Greg? You've got one in that. You're going to talk about them later on, aren't you? In a little bit more well, uh, detail. I would have had them. Um, I would have impressed the other way around, actually, because I think Paul Cat's a better horse than Ella the Dane, but they they are uh, aiming for the top six with a bit of luck. Really? Okay. I don't fancy their chances. Okay. Well, you never know. That's what I was saying to somebody the other day. Uh, You've only got to. Uh... Uh, I think. I think Glenn's biggest danger is another horse, actually. So. <laughs> well, you know what? That could happen quite a lot this week, couldn't it? That Leon's biggest danger could be his other horse, and um, quite a few of the times when Josh has got the favourite, his biggest danger is going to be his other horse as well. But yeah, I mean, it's, there's one thing that's disappointed me about this Cheltenham so far, and that is the fact that Stu and Doug haven't got many horses. We haven't got any horses, but I've got a couple. So I, I can't sort of um, have a laugh at what's going to come last. <laughs> well, hold on. I think I have a better record at Cheltenham than you do, mister. Well, only because you've been around longer than me. It doesn't matter, does it? Uh, doesn't excuse, matter. Not, doesn't excuse, age, age is irrelevant. Excuse me, there's a race tomorrow. The Fred Winter Juvenile Hill. I've won it for the last two seasons on a trot. Oh, well, you've just given that a kiss of the death. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I got that worked out for my horse. <laughs> <Have you? laughs> well, the thing is, I didn't realise I'd won it for two years on the trot before. I was, I'd have probably put something better in it, but uh, never mind. No, I'll be. I'll tell you now the last race of today, day one, the year of the national hunt chase. I've got a good chance in that with one of my horses of the two. Have you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I fancy that. Or looking at the rest of the field after obviously seeing other than John's crossmaster in that race, although I shouldn't really be talking about it. Um, I think I have a very good chance of that. I might just. Uh, get one over you straight away, Martin. Well, I suppose it would be quite funny. I'd never, I'd never really end of it, would I? If you had more Cheltenham winners than me, and you only got two horses, and I've got thirty. That would be frustrating, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be nice if it, if it wins. I'll cheer it all the way to the line while I'm commentating on it, as I'm sure you will cheer all mine as they're <laughs> finishing fourth or fifth. Anyway, just looking at this champion a little bit, looking back through the past years, you haven't done too bad in this grey. You had a second and a third a few seasons ago. Yeah, I've been disappointed with my horses this year. Over two miles hurdles, like I said, that. Paul Cat, you know, it will be LOD maybe time, you know, but it's been disappointing. Well, I don't think you can be too disappointed about too much, can you? It's got to be the best season you've had, hasn't it? So, no, isn't it? no, I've had a great season on the flat. I didn't expect so, you know. Mm. Well, your jumpers, yeah, your jumpers are still doing all right, I reckon. If you can just see those results there still, I'm not sort of suggesting anything, but if you look to season seven, you'll just see you came third in the champion hurdle. What's third? You had to have AP McCoy riding it to get it anywhere near third. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good year that year, I remember that year well. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, yeah, so... If you're looking at Leon, even, he has a good record in this as well, doesn't he? Like you've just said, he's won three of the last four, so... Well, I don't know... Yeah, no, he's got taped, I think. can't remember how many seasons ago it was, but do you remember there was one season he won all the big races, didn't he? All the, all the major, he won the Champion Earl, the Gold Cup, the Ryanair and the Stairs, I think. I think he won all four of them in the same season. May I think well, it was only the season before last, wasn't it? Yeah, it may, he didn't well, the last season, I don't think. Yeah, it may well have been season seven, might not it? He, he won this in season seven and season eight, and he won it in season six as well. So all these sort of new people who've come along who might be Suspect. thinking that he's only just suddenly become a top trainer. He's, he's been one of those trainers over the past sort of few seasons that wins the big races, but maybe just doesn't win the bulk of races because he doesn't bother that much in the normal weeks. But uh, I'm talking to him now, so I'll been around that. a long time. So what are we going for in this then? I'm definitely going for... Um, because I can't see anything beating it. Me too, I'm going for that one. That's a, that's a banker. No, we're just coming in with it now. No, I, I, I suppose I would also go for that horse because obviously that's where the, that's uh, every chance of that winning. But if we all go for the same horse, kind of makes it a little bit, a little bit disappointing. But yes, I'll go for that one. UG. Okay, and well, Doug's already decided he's going to fall, so he's not going for it. He's going to fall, so I'm going to go for um, uh, Megan's Ciara. Megan's okay. Ciara. Oh, okay, that's. Uh, no, or Megan's, however. It's yeah, been. I think it's probably Megan's Ciara. I think it's, uh, it's got some patchy looking form, but um, a lot of ground on it. So. No, it's well out of its fit. I think it's class, really. To be honest with you, I think mm. it's one of the listed horses, and I think it came second in a Group One. I think that's about the best it's ever had. No, I'd, mm. uh, I'd, I'd, for a place, I think you're probably on there, Doug, but uh, I don't think it's going to be Leon's horse. Well, that's because you're, you're thinking Leon's horse is going to complete the race. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think Leon will think it's unfortunate if he finishes the race. I think he'll probably be quite pleased, to be honest. <laughs> but, 
Okay, so that's the champion hurdle then. Three of us think that uh, Leon's going to win it with an unleashed a shit car, and Doug thinks it's going to fall over and an outsider's going to win. Yes. James Shea has invited us to have a look around his stable just prior to Cheltenham. James was a regular trainer in the SO6 leagues up until the last couple of years where he dropped out for a couple of seasons after having some great success, including surprising everybody by winning the Grand National with a five-year-old case closed in my first or second season around. Well, anyway, he's come back refreshed and as far on all cylinders with his late charging horses that he has. He has a lot of, he used to always used to have a lot of hold-up horses and I think he's still got quite a few the same. Well, he's given us a little bit of a guide to his chances at Cheltenham. So let's have a look up to see what he's got on offer on day one then. Well, the first one that he's got going is in the Glen Farkless Handicap and here he's got Hardy Accord, which we've seen quite a few times this season and it's got a real chance off a lightweight and James thinks that it will suit his running style perfectly. It's been running over slightly shorter and he thinks he's going to enjoy the step up in trip after coming a decent fourth over two furlongs shorter last week so Hardy Accord might be well, well we want to take a look at in the again Glen Farkless and you'll see that coming late I would think in James's familiar green silks. His second runner on day one is a horse called Razaman Ages and that according to James is his best hurdler it's currently got a rating of 150 this is also a very frustrating sort of horse as he finishes second quite a lot four times in group company and for quite a lot of the time he's led most of the way as well which is not the way that James' horses used to run from what I remember years ago he was used to have a lot of hold up horses so this will be a, a front runner and he hasn't managed to get his head in front on the post yet it will have a tough task to do so in the Coral Cup but it's got the um, it's got the ability to do it and as somebody who knows what they're talking about once said to me you don't get top weight for nothing and so sure this is no forlorn hope and James will be pretty hopeful at that one he's going to run a big race for him in the Coral Cup he's um, also got a live contender in the final race on day one which is the, the four mile handicap chase and the horse he's got there is called Not Now Never and he's already won twice over four miles this season and his handicap mark is a pretty good one the only problem with with this horse, according to James, is that it's a little bit inconsistent and it's got a tendency to drop off out the back and run no sort of race. And he seems to think it'll either be first or it'll be last. But given his um, pedigree with these long distance horses, I think it's probably more likely to be first than last. And I'll be expecting to see that one rattling through at the end. Right then, lead up to Cheltenham, and I've got two of the season's top trainers with me come to talk about their horses. We've got Champion Elect and Master of Tom, Leon Van Rensburg. How are you doing, Leon? Yeah, good, thanks. And we've also got a returner from about 700 years ago, <laughs> pseudonym Hems, Mr. Craig Allen, down from another one from Down Under. Like Doug, how are you doing? Okay. Craig, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> You're good, okay. Craig, yeah. Righto, so how long have you both been involved in this then? Leon. Uh, yeah, a long time. SO2, I think, was when I joined. Oh, right, no. It was the tail end of SO2, yeah. so it might have been a little bit before Craig. I right, we could probably let you know. Right. I, I, I didn't play for a while, though. It was sort of SO3 and SO4. I wasn't part of the league for a bit. Oh, right, no. When did you sort of become the unseen god behind the scenes that does all the tinkering? When the league collapsed, I sort of like um, I had some programming experience. I said I'd, you know, I'd do it because there was no one else, really. Oh, right, so, okay. yeah, since then. Oh, right. So, and since, um, since SO5, I think. All oh, right. How, how difficult a job is it? Is it one of those things you've been doing that long now that you can just do it without thinking about it, or does it take a lot of time? I had to change a lot of things because it was quite wasn't written that well. So I changed the code. Now it's you know it used to take ages to find bugs, but now it's really quick. Yeah, it's good. Um, and the uh, site updates in real time and everything. Yeah, I changed. Uh, I rewrote everything after a while. That's that's probably one more last few seasons. I'm really think good because um, in between seasons I was working on the code rather than playing but yeah oh it's so. uh, it's pretty it's pretty impressive stuff that uh, we've got such a professional sort of setup behind the scenes so uh, i think uh, on behalf of everybody else i uh, thank you for all the work you do putting in to all yeah. that uh, yeah, and, and it's, well, it's enjoyable anyway so i enjoy it so that's good. yeah that's good well, what about you craig because you were around a long time ago and then disappeared for a bit didn't you yeah i think i was season uh so three from memory oh, it's way back when um yeah and then really got into so four 
SO, a little bit of SO5, but I didn't like the game as much. There weren't enough changes which we basically spoke to Mark about, you know, which would make it better overall, especially for league players anyway. And SO6, I didn't play, and I'm back for SO7, which is really good. It's awesome. Okay, the green so what, engine's what, just brilliant. What, what was it that enticed you back? Uh, <laughs> good question, actually. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Um, I saw... Um, I saw an ad come up because I follow um, status orders on Facebook and the new game popped up and I thought, hmm, interesting. I'll, um, I'll I'll give that a go, actually. Yeah, I'm not as busy as, as I used to be now, so uh, I've got a bit of free time. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's going to take uh, <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of beating down and uh, a lot of uh, time and effort to beat Leon, I think, for next season as well. But I think a few of us will slowly catch up to him, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I don't, know. I don't have the time to keep playing as much as everyone else. So I'm sure people will catch up. Yeah, no, it's going to be a lot more, a lot more exciting. I think next season. I think it's uh, going to be a lot closer and a lot more. Uh, I think um, better races overall closer finishes and stuff like that but it's been great this season overall it's been awesome it has, I think it's a really good race I think you can tell how much better it's going to be with the fact all the, the newcomers and not just the people that have come back there's two or three people who've come back from a few years ago isn't there but there's also a lot of new people and they're doing, they're doing really well straight off so and that, that didn't happen before oh uh, yeah yeah like we, we've uh, Dave's going to be joining again he was probably one of the best national trainers ever I think to play the game he's uh, recently just bought it and uh, yeah he's enjoying it so far so you can expect even more competition next season oh. so it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be nice to get a few more back as well but um, I, I, I think I've lost a lot of contact details but we but kept David's because we were we were basically dueling um, quite a few seasons for the for the championship I think I bet him one season we won winner it was that close it was crazy it really was yeah, yeah. and I think, think he hit a blank at Cheltenham where I had quite a few winners and that just flipped it that just changed it yeah so that's good that's exciting. Yeah, yeah it'd be good to have another good, uh, veteran back in, back involved for sure. Yeah, that, that'll be good. Mix, mix it, mix in the old, the old with the new, and it's all, it's all, uh, it's all going, all going pretty well so, so far. Yeah, I think, the, I think the game's quite appealing. I think um, uh, we might get a few more old people coming back because the game's pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah. going on, going on the new trainers um, sort of starting more quickly. I, I've got a game bread in um, on the second tomorrow, running the second no, second uh, week, uh, day at Cheltenham, which I think has got a huge chance. Uh, in previous version of the best, uh, that, that would never have happened. No, we, 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 no we, way. We. Okay, there's no way game bread would even be going to look in. So, no, not, I mean, not, that's not, one of the big changes. Not for, not for the really big races. I mean, the, the only ones that I ever had that, that did any good were in the real long distance races, but not for not very not very many. It's certainly certainly a lot a lot better now, I think. So anyway, we better get on to day one and the chances that you've got. I mean, I'll start with you, Leon, because you're the champion elect. Before we go on to that, yeah. what were you thinking I mean, that day when we had trials day? Was it trials day two or three when you just won every single race? I mean, you must have been sitting there thinking. Yeah, you know what's going on here? Yeah, I was uh, I was a bit shocked actually. Uh, I didn't realise I was um, my horses were that good. So it was it was a nice surprise, and, and some of them are still around and doing really well. I mean, GR Joe's one, which uh, runs in the Gold Cup, and Unen um, Lachlachasefta, which runs uh, t- t- in the first of today, the, yeah, the first day. My, yeah, that's my favourite horse. <laughs> that one for obvious reasons, and um, I'll, I'll learn how yeah. to say it right before the end of the week. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's basically just a never-ending story in German, so you can call it that in the race well, if you want to, because <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> we, had, we had a discussion yesterday about, with obviously about the champion hurdle because it's on, it's on, it's on day one, and. Stu was saying that he's glad that I was in the commentator on it every week. Um, and I said to him, I'm not 100% sure that I get the name right, but I'm just trying to say it the same every week. It's okay. But I said to him, it totally, yeah. it totally throws me because I used to have a German girlfriend with the surname, which was Gesh- which was Geshka, which is very, very similar to that. And every time I see it, that's what I go to say. So, yeah, I could always I could always check in a form with a few more German names for next year. So I can speak German. Can, so. Can, so day one, then you've got yeah. odds on favourite in the first race, haven't you, Leon? Yeah, I mean, it's a great all set, but like, I mean that's not the course for it. So I wouldn't be surprised if it gets turned over. Um, yeah, it, it, it was in for other races. That's why it's in the novice section. So I, I would be happy if it wins. I wouldn't be surprised if it wins, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it gets beaten. Um, so it's not my best chance for the day. My best chance is probably in the um, in the champion hurdle. I've won that about seven or eight times. I've got a really good record in that race. So I've got like two with huge chances. 
Um, only look at the stuff that probably should win, although Understory Rebel has a chance as well. Of the others, um, probably in the Neptune, I've got a, I've got a good chance, and also in the ISA. Yeah, I, I, I would say those are probably my best chances. I, I don't know which one in the ISA or the Neptune. Uh, Dave Nichols may have got a chance as well, I suppose. And um, yeah, the, the others that I, I'm not, I don't think. I, well, McCreet has got no chance, and, and Chess, I don't think, can beat uh, Josh's horse. So um, that's pretty much my horses for the day, I think. I think that's pretty much everything. Okay. Unfortunately, well, I, don't have a, I don't have a run in the champion chase because uh, my two more chases just won up to it. So. Yeah, that was another thing that we were talking about yesterday because there was a season, wasn't it, two or three seasons ago, and you won all the big races, didn't you? You won the, the big four. <laughs> you, you yeah, I won, won, the big, won, the, won the big four. That was uh, my, my best childhood memory, obviously. That was a really good one. Um, I had a really good good uh, chaser in hereditary rule um and then yeah i, I, I uploaded the uh, the champion chase and the hurdle the champion hurdle winners in the and the upload window so it was a it was pretty good it was a, it was a, an amazing child with no one so i can't replicate that obviously i don't have a run in the champion chase so no i'm sure you'll still pick up but, plenty of winners what, what, what about you craig what's your best chances on day one i like my runner in the first I really do. Um, it was going to be my champion at loss, to be honest. And uh, I thought I need some novices. That's where I kind of lacked um, a bit of greenness with this new setup. Um, and just being pretty much out of touch with the game for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I didn't upload a lot of novices, which I should have done. But next season will be different. I'll have a more, much more balanced stable. And it'll be a good lessons learned for, for this season. Mm. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what I have noticed from, do, from doing the commentating is that the horses you've put in since the window are considerably better than the ones you had before. Not that they were bad, yeah. but you can see uh, with quite a lot of people, their, their window horses are a lot better than their ones before. Yeah, yeah, I think I've made some rapid progress. Um, I actually went back to a save game with a Super Stallion, um, which I didn't notice until later on when they started winning on the flat. Like, for instance, right beside you, we won the Sussex. You were like, yeah. uh, wow, I need to go back because I, yeah, I just forgot, forgot about it until later on. And then I just started seeing winners in my trials and you were like, wow, they're all from this particular Stallion. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I've seen massive improvements as well. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think my Tingle Creek winner, um, first time out, and uh, River will um, will run a massive race. I think they'll give uh, Josh's horse good run for his money. I think if he stands up, he, he unseated on the second start around Ascot, which I shouldn't have really put him in. I just didn't try well at all, and I just wanted to see um, see him run basically. So um, Dawn run in the handicap as well, race three, the Ultima, but she's still a baby. Um, because we didn't get the update for um, all ages to be run in the same race, it's kind of difficult to mm. to see who was better. Um, but yeah, that, that update's made a massive difference. Uh. Um, I also it. made some mistakes. It has. I mean, I've got I've got one that I've put in as a I've put in as a juvenile hurdler this year, and it's absolutely brilliant at nine or ten. But I'm, what are the chances of it still being my best at nine and ten in five seasons time? No, so it's just the way it goes, I suppose, isn't it? You hope you're going to improve past that anyway. But um, it's, it's good that you can run them against each other now. So that's um, that's day one then. So best of luck today. So you reckon you might get what two winners, Leon and Craig? You reckon you might get one? I've got a few chances. I've been pleasantly surprised actually with my runners if I'm honest um, you want to rush to rush start rush to get them uploaded at, at the start of the season so anything is a bonus for me I'll be happy with one winner throughout Cheltenham to be honest it'll be it'll be awesome for me and then it's all yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll get more than one though so yeah, <laughs> next year's going to be much harder to uh, <laughs> to beat, uh, beat Craig so I think it's pretty, it's pretty good yeah, the way I'm just... enjoy it while I can <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in this league, everybody seems to understate their chances. Nobody, nobody bigs themselves up. Everybody says, ah, oh, my horse is not very good. I'll only win one race or whatever. And then they go and win about seven. So yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, in day in day one, I mean, I, I think in the in the RSA and in, in the Neptune and um, in the David Nichols, I, I got good chances, but I, I just don't know which one mm. has got a better chance. That's that's the thing. So I, I can't tell you which <laughs> of the two is gonna is gonna run better. So okay, well let, let's hope. You know, like, I mean, yeah, the RSA chase bomb in the pocket was you know specifically uploaded for this race. So it should, it should run a good race, but I mean, you know, my other one could beat it. So yeah, yeah it should, it should be a pretty uh, should be a pretty exciting day. And best of luck to both of you on day one and I'll talk to you again later on day two 
Uh, more of that great chat tomorrow then with Leon and Craig. And now we're going to go over to Gray, who's going to tell us about his chances from Pontypool Racing on day one of the Cheltenham. Hi, this is Gray, and welcome to my stable tour for Cheltenham. This will be day one. We'll start off with the Supreme Novices Hurdle. I have one horse in this race called Silent But Deadly. It's won twice this season. I expect him to win well, but I don't expect him to win. Place looks the best chance for him. And that's my first runner at Cheltenham. In race two, the Hackle Chase, I have two runners in Carbon Neutral, who's won twice this season, and Seiko. I expect Carbon Neutral to be the number one choice, although Seiko is just as good at him. But then again, I think the place looks the best possible chance for the stable. On the race three, the ultimate, ultimate handicap chase, native Apache is down in the weights, and I expect him a good one. I think he has a good chance. Top three, the race four, the champion will have two runners in the field, Ella Hubbard Dame and Nazia Paul Catam. I think they're below this class, and I do fancy some of those in this race. But I think the top six are only those two will be a good result for the stable. The Glen Parker's chase is race five. I do, I do, I do, I do. He is up the top there and will carry top weight. I might not stay the three mile seven, but I have to put him somewhere. And he's also uh, relieving the weight that's going to be on Hemmer's Ledge in February, which I think will be the better of the two. And that's a very good chance of winning. Race six is the David Nicholson Mayor's hurdle. Jardine will take a chance. She's only waiting 1, 2, 6, she has a lot to find with the others in the race, but I expect her to run a good race all the same. Race 7, the Close Brothers Novices Handicap Chase, this is the best chance Lim for Skip has got of winning the race, I think, all season. He, he's only waited 99, the top weight here is 120. He's a good novice, he's a good front runner, and I'll give a good count of He has a chance. Race 8 is the Neptune Investment Hurdle. Um, there is after two in there, Dapple Grey is probably the, the classy of the two horses. Class A has been disappointing, um, but I think Dapple Grey can run a good race a little again. Not top, top notch and may struggle to win or get into a place. Race 9 is a race I don't have a winner in, and that's the ISA. In race 10, the Coral Handicap Hurdle. I know you love me, I think is well weighted, and this is I think my best chance on day one along with um, Emma's le legend February so I'm hoping for one or two winners really and um, this is a very good chance to lay level means get a lot of weight from what the top ones there race 11 a queen mother champion chase Shanghai Lily is below this class she's only handicapped she's, won, she's already done twice this year so you know you can't graduate Mr. Tillywinks down there although he won first time out he's been struggling ever since in top class and there's too many good horses in the race I don't think I'll get anything in this race but I hope they both run well and race 12 the national hunt chase I don't have a runner that's day one for Pontypool race in stable tour toward Cheltenham I will see you on day two so as we know then Stu likes to get up really, really early in the morning, so he thought who better to send out on a gallops this morning and get a little bit of a look at the weather and the course and see what's going on early on. So here was Stu earlier on today. Hi, we join me down here on the course as we uh, watch some of the horses go galloping by here in a little bit of early morning workout. Well, the good news is the rain's moved away now and the course is starting to dry out. I think it'll officially be good to soft today. Perfect uh, festival ground. As you can see, there's a few horses around me here. I can see Joshua Sutherland's Word to the Wise, as well as the Monster. You see, the Monster goes in the Ark later today. As well as I think Word to the Wise in the Queen Mother. Just also moving along there, I can see Andahar Revere for Craig Allen. Has every chance also in the Queen Mother. So good luck to that one. They all look very fit. But weather forecast: it looks like we're going to have a good couple of sunny days. And maybe on day three it might get a little bit cloudy but I think we can be sure that we're gonna have some perfect ground here for the festival speak to you a bit later and back to the studio Martin 
Oh, thanks for that then, Stu. You can get yourself off into the warm now and get yourself some breakfast and already for some commentating later on. I'm going to go now into a little section where I had a conversation with last season's champion trainer, Joshua Sutherland, which is a fascinating insight into how his operation works. And then after that, I'll take you on a small tour of the chances of the horses from Leedham Towers. All the heavyweights appearing on the preview show this season, and a big welcome to champion trainer Joshua Sutherland. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing very well, Martin. Thanks very much for having me. That's good. And uh, no, did what he's been doing, didn't you, about four or five seasons ago? Well, yeah, I, yeah, I think it was season four I started and discovered, as many newbies do, that the league is a very different animal to the game. I think I picked up two winners on the hunt, and that was about it, really. <laughs> uh, and a lot of wooden spoons. I was right because that was my first year commentating. I think I didn't have a stable then. I was just a, just a commentator, and, and without being disrespectful, about it, you, you were just one of the also runs that year, weren't you? And you were I, I of... was, yeah, I was dreadful. I, I came into it, I guess, like every other new trainer, with the the view that my undefeated G1 winning monsters in game would be sufficient, and I'd I'd clean up and quickly <laughs> discovered that that wasn't the case. Yeah, I um, think I think we all did that. I certainly did that as well. <laughs> After the first day, I was I was almost on the point of well, I'll just stick to doing the commentating. I think forget this for a love. But the one good thing for that, from from my point of view, coming in then when I did, is that I actually saw your sort of rise from from the bottom to the top all the way through really so i mean was was that a sort of concentrated effort that you just thought right if i'm gonna play this i'm gonna make sure i'm the best at it no i i so after after the first season coming nowhere i sort of sat back and just went well look it's the art of the possible really you know none of these uh guys have anything that i don't they're not you know, they don't have any particular skill or ability above and beyond what I can do with the game. The first season really just demonstrated the difference between league play and and, um, and game play. And I just sort of decided, you know what, I quite fancy that. I'm gonna I'm gonna push the envelope a bit. And yeah, to be honest, Paul Paul became my target. <laughs> it was like, right, I'm gonna beat Paul. That's that's my mission, my 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 task. And I, I think the first season gave me a bit of. Um, enthusiasm for it and then i just read the forums looked at bars paid you know things i hadn't really bothered to pay attention to previously mm. because the game doesn't force you to mm. um you know looked at all the old posts looked at everything from stuff going back to scatters obviously discovered the tiff at that point um and how you can kind of build horses and then i think in season five i think i had about 11 or 12 flat wins and about 27 on the hunt and then that gave me enough impetus to go right well i'm going in the right direction what i'm doing is correct i just need to do more of it and push it push it a little bit harder certainly paid off yeah yeah i mean it took i think season six was probably the one where you argue i broke into top tier and i think seven eight nine i was probably the one to be shot at certainly on the on the national hunt i never won a flat title but by eight and nine i think my flat horses were a lot better um but i did all my hard work on the hunt all mm. the, the two dcs i won were on the basis that my hunt team was better than paul's hunt team and my flat team was just about good enough to to keep me in pace with him so mm. But yeah, no, it was a very, it was a concentrated and very deliberate effort to, to get to the top of the pile, basically. Yeah, well, I think the one one thing that we've we discovered over the last over the last few weeks as well, while we're talking, that's been going on about how we were working with seven rather than six, is that I think you're the only top trainer that, that does the does the training manually. Everybody else has it on automatic. How, how does that work? I mean, what do you want to do? It seems it seems to be, and I, I was quite surprised actually. I mean, I think. Um, Serious Chill is the only other one who does it. From what he said, I think he's a manual trainer as well. But yeah, I was I was really genuinely surprised that nobody else manually trained. Um because I'd always done it. I mean, when I approached the game, I was looking for a racing sim. And when I, I found it, just bored day at work, Googling. Hmm. So when I started playing, it was always looking at the options, going manual training, non-manual training. Let's do manual training because I wanted to have the full control. I wanted to have the, the simulator experience. So I've, I've done it well before I even considered the league. I was manually trained. Um, hmm. And I've done it 
every game I've played since, basically. So, um, it's just a lot more clicks, really. Mm, so what do you actually have to do then? Because, I mean, I obviously thought a, a similar sort of thing, and it was going to be one of those like, simulating type things, and then when I sort of got into it, everybody said, no, 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 you don't want to bother with that, you just do automatic training because it doesn't do anything different anyway. And, and now you may be thinking, well, maybe it does do something different, but how much how much extra things do you have to do? I mean, do you have to like send the horses out on a gallops every week? Do you have to check fitnesses every week and all that sort of stuff? Or, or what? No, you you don't. I mean, you can use the gallops, but I tend I, I don't to be honest. I've, I've messed with it, but I haven't found it actually gives me any tangible advantage or any particular insight. Um, it really comes down to you've got, I suppose, it's six variables that you have to manage on each horse. So you manage the training that they're in, and there's three different tiers of training. You can put them in essentially what is just resting, uh, where they're they're basically just walking. They're not really doing anything more than that. You can do a mid tier training which keeps them in a, a relatively decent fitness, but not race fitness. And then you have full-on training, which is race fitness training. So you have, it's a traffic light system, red, amber, and blue, basically. So you have to select each horse which training it's in. You then have a, a secondary option, which allows you to specify a training. It can be mid, which is a mix between stamina and speed. It can be stamina focused or it can be speed focused. So you have another little bar that you set for each horse to determine what you want them to do uh, and the last one is you have specific trainings which targets the free uh, attributes on the horse file so jumping starting and agility so you can put them in focused training to get those free variables um, and you can use them some of them in combination some of them can't so if you're in blue training you can use you can do jumps ability and starting but if you're in amber or red you can only do training training you can't actually develop their jumping whilst getting them ready for a race no, okay. so it's just about planning really you just have to plan think ahead it takes about 21 days give or take to get a horse from unfit to fit so you have to manage your racing schedule with a little bit more enthusiasm or, or you know focus if you mm. would like because you have to make sure they're hitting their their fitness for the point you want to race so it probably be it, you know it makes it more of a sim it makes mm. it more of a, a sim, and there's probably a little bit more management in there. Yeah, you know, I suppose you get more sort of satisfaction do you, when you see when you see the improvement coming. If you think, well, I've actually done that rather than let the computer do it. Yeah, and there are tangible things that you can see as a consequence of it. You know, you can genuinely move those those free um, the attributes from agility to jump in to to start in. You can change those. You can actually have a, a material effect, and you can see them progress by leaving the horse doing that particular training for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And it takes a little bit of time. It takes six to eight months, I would think, to get agility to move one level, say, from average to good. Jumping probably takes a little bit longer. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, you, I don't know, but I guess there's some sort of counter in the background. So you can come off that training and go and do something else with them and then put them back into that training and continue where you left off. There mm. are certain horses that never move. You can never improve. And I, I suspect it goes back to the training adaptation bar that you used to be able to see mm. on, on the old bars. Yeah. So there are some horses I leave in agility training for their whole career and it just doesn't do anything. They, they never progress from poor. Mm -hmm. But most of them, once you weed out those that take to it and those that don't, most of them I can get to good, good and good within a couple of years, really. I was going to ask you how much longer I thought we thought it took to do it that way, but taking into account the fact that you've never done it automatically, you probably wouldn't know, but... So no, it's, it? it's it's hard to tell, really. I mean, every every season, so I, I have a very specific and uh, linear approach to how I do it. So I get my new horses, I basically do a big filter, go through, decide which ones I want to keep, which ones I don't. When I've cut down the list I want to keep, I then name them all. In this example, in the jump stable, so they're all two-year-olds, uh, and you're starting the season on a UK game around about September time. So I name them all. I then go and have a look at each horse and decide what I want to do with them in terms of agility, jumping, or starting. No. Most of them do agility when they're two-year-olds because I do think it's beneficial for jump horses to be agile. Yep. Um, and normally I, I whack stamina training for their first. So they get a six-month period from, well, not quite six months, they get from September to Jan, 
just doing refinement, if you would like. I then race them quite hard on the NHFs when they're three-year-olds. They usually get three or four races, sometimes a bit more. And then when they've done that allotment of races, they go back into some sort of training until the season ends. So I have very specific patterns of what I do with each category or each year of horse at a particular point in the calendar. Hmm. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier to manage the training requirements. Oh, it's, 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 it certainly sounds like a, a lot more involved than the, than the ordinary way, don't you? I and mean, I personally find it takes enough time just entering them in the races and all that sort of stuff. But doing all that, doing all that as well, it's, it's a it's a pretty big task. Do you have to do it horse by horse? Or can you take like a group of horses and band them together and move them all at once? No, you have to do it by horse. It's an individual click per oh, horse, okay. basically. So there's three there's three options if you like, depending on the type of training. I mean, once you enter them into a race, it's pretty simple. You just go down the list and, and flip them all onto red. Hmm which is what pushes them on to race fitness. Um, and then all your monitoring is to see if you get a, an injury before the uh, the race off. It's when you're not racing that you're you're tinkering, I suppose. Mm. With the success that you've had, one or two people might be tempted to sort of start a, start a manual game and just, just see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are benefits. Um, I don't know that they're massive. I still feel, look, fundamentally, this game, more so than SO6, SO7 really is about... I think luck actually luck and time because it's all fundamentally about finding that horse at start um, that will push your lines you can only do work with what you've got whereas on six you could actually go and create it six was actually probably more work and more skill because you were specifically looking for traits and bars to, to mix and mm. match with what you had to progress here it's very much a question of luck mm. you know you're, you're shooting into the stud farm and hoping that you land something that's different to what you've got now or augments what you've got now but i think once you've got it manual training gives you the ability to make the best of it. okay it'll be interesting if you shut yourself in the foot there now and everybody else is going to start doing that and they'll catch you up so <laughs> <laughs> well possibly i think you know at the end i mean leon doesn't do it and we know this and and i think there are there are advantages and disadvantages so from what he sort of responded on that thread that discussed the topic it seems like his horses progress differently from mine so every horse i have i look at it as a two-year-old i know when i look at it again as a three-year-old it will look worse so everything drops yeah. in the first year very similar to the way it used to do on on six um when you used to get them as one-year-olds mm. in a combined game yeah in that first year they would drop massively and then they would actually in six they pretty much return to normal by mm. three yeah. in this game I, I find that return to what you saw at two year old takes a little bit longer um, and then when they get there then they start to push forward mm. so I don't know that I have a massive advantage I think where I probably have advantages are on the ability to jump train so I can take a poor jumper <laughs> and assuming it has that training adaptation stat I can't see but more often than not they seem to I can turn it into a good jumper, or at the very least, an average jumper. Day one, I think some of my better chances are in day one. Um, I don't think I have a hope in the Supreme. I think Leon will probably sweep that, or maybe Tam. I quite like Tam's horse in the Supreme. I think I've got a good shout in the Arkle. I think the Monster is probably the best two-mile chaser I have, uh, although I actually now have one better, well, two better, bred quite recently, but... Is, is that the monster one that you brought in at the window? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what you think about this, but I've, I've been saying this to everybody I've spoken to so far this week, that I've noticed from doing the commentating, the improvement that people have made from the start of the season to the window is very noticeable. Yeah, and I, and I think this is this goes to my theory at the moment, everybody's horses are rubbish. <laughs> I mean, we all sit there thinking we've got good horses, but I think in, in relative terms, back to six, I think they're all, they're all rubbish. I mean, if you think, if you played a six game where you could see what was going on and exclusively bred with game horses, mm. you're not going to end up with anything particularly decent. I mean, none of the top trainers even bothered breeding with game horses towards the, towards the end because it would never improve your life. Mm. You're always having to be very specific to get a particular stat. So I tend to think everybody's horses are rubbish, and therefore, <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. at any given point, anyone will leap forward mm. or can leap forward. Yeah, it certainly looks like it might be quite uh, quite interesting next season if everybody gets stuck in during the, during a break. So, what, what about the champion hurdle? Have you got anything to challenge Leon's monster in that? <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think my, my two weakest areas at the moment are the three-mile chasers and the two-mile hurdlers. Um, 
I don't I don't fancy either of my chances in the in the champion. If they get place money, I'll be happy. Okay. Um, like the one in the day? Uh, the ones I like, I think Lana Del Rey has a pretty good chance in David Nicholson. I think she has had the measure of Leon's two um, fair amount of time, and I'm not entirely certain there's anything else there that particularly worries me. I think she runs the right race, and it's very specific about the right race. Um, if she runs the, the style that is, is good, i.e. holds up and then comes late, um, I think i got a pretty good chance in the mares. Uh, I, I mentioned the Arkle. I think I've got a pretty good chance with the monster in the Arkle. Um, I, I think I have a fair to middling chance in the Neptune. Stop messing around with Leon's horse that he bought in at the window has kind of changed that division a little bit. But I think Reap What You Sow and Sins of the Angels will be there with thereabouts. I like my chances in the RSA, but I, I know that horse has to, so when the demon comes, has to run a very specific race. Um, because it's a particularly, so on the, the bars, we go back to the stats in the bars, it's really slow. It's kind of like speed of 40. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all about, it has to front run. And it, it, I'm, I guess it probably has a very high cruising burst that I can't see. And it has a pretty good acceleration. So if it front runs and it sets the pace and it needs to explode into the lead, probably from the, about eight furlongs from home, it's very difficult to catch. And I see this at trial. When it trials, if it runs in a certain way, it wins. And if it doesn't, it comes nowhere. So I think it has a chance, but it has to set the pace. And then the other one I think I'm probably in with a good shout on is the Queen Mother. I think word to the wise, who's now probably my fourth best two-mile chaser uh, on my trials. But I think she's probably still in, in league content, probably the, the pick of the older uh, two-mile chaser. So I think she's got a pretty decent chance if she stays on her feet. Right, so if she you... doesn't win, she'll only be caught by one horse. So. Right, so it sounds like you've got a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent ad for day one then. So what, what, what would you take as a good result for day one? A couple of winners? A couple of winners, yeah. I, I think I think three would be good. Uh, or Three or four would be excellent. Um, but I think two, anything less than two, and I'd be disappointed. I think between Words of the Wise, The Monster, Lana Del Rey, uh, and When the Demon Comes, I'd like to think two of those uh, will will do the business. Okay, well, it's probably my probably my best day actually, day one. I think most of my chances are in day one. Okay, well, good good luck with them then, and we'll um, we'll, we'll we'll hope you have a, have a good day one, and we'll talk to you later about day two. The first runner from Leedham Towers at the Cheltenham Festival this season is in race three, the Ultima Handicap Chase, a race which we won a couple of seasons ago with a, a horse called Fasson Melancholique, which ran from out of the handicap and was uh, a bit of a surprise to us all here. Well, hopefully this year we've got one that's got a bit more of a bit more of a chance than that one had, but hopefully we'll get a similar type of result. The eight-year-old Mare Astro Charm Glances will be the first one to fly the flag from, from here. Uh, she's already won twice this season, winning last week the Skybet Handicap chase over three miles that was her first attempt at the three mile trip previously she's been operating over two and a half miles two mile five furlongs but she won three weeks ago as well on a hunter chase over two mile five and didn't look like she was stopping so we pushed her up to 22 and a half furlongs the following week she was going really well when she made an uncharacteristic mistake and fell so we fancied the chances of popping her up to three miles and so we did that last week and she won pretty comfortably on the soft going after looking a little bit out of it early on and ran on really well so we're quite hopeful of a decent weight that we can do quite well in this ultimate handicap chase as i say a race that we did quite well in a couple of seasons ago she's um running off 136 the top weight running off 170 so we're gonna be pretty much on bottom weight and will be um i think there's only four above her in the in the handicap one for david robertson or two for david robertson actually one for leon and one for darren thompson so we're pretty hopeful that if maybe one of those four runs a little bit disappointed that we can get into the top three there and get the get the meeting off to a decent sort of start our second runner of the week is in race five another one that Stu will be commentating on as he likes to call it the Glen Farcical handicap chase it's the one over the cross country trip and we had one or two horses that we fancied putting in this but we made a schoolboy error of running one or two of them over a trip that was a little bit too far or a little bit too short for the rest of the season and they have not qualified so we had one that we thought was going to do really, would do really well in this called West by Rush, but didn't get in through the handicap rule, so we've had to steer a horse called Ormello Ances into it. Ormello Ances was one of our two runners in the Trial Grand National earlier in the season, and to be quite honest, has done absolutely nothing at all. And it'll be an absolute miracle if he finishes anywhere near. Not sure how it's going to cope with the obstacles either. It's just 
basically a case of putting it in somewhere. It's a very small field though for this race. There's one or two long distance races popping up this week and it's a pretty weak looking field but I don't think it's quite weak enough for our or Mellow Ounces. The biggest shock for us here is the fact that we're on the same rating as a Paul Rhodes runner. But well, Paul Rhodes has done such a good start with his jumpers to SO7 as he did in SO6 but if you'd have told me that I'd be sharing bottom weight with Paul Rhodes in the Glen Farcical chase then I'd have thought you're in cloud cuckoo land. I'd probably struggle to finish in the money there and if a lot of all mellow ounces are 10 year old gets around safely we'll be happy enough it's one of the four we've got in the mix to possibly go in the grand national but it's looking like that one probably will be not going down that route moving on to our next one then we've only got horses in odd numbered races on on day one which wasn't uh, wasn't up the plan but it means all of our our races are going to be commentated by us too so i'll be able to sit back and and enjoy them and probably our best day to be honest is day one because we've already said we fancy astro charm glances in race three kind of sneaking little feeling about our horse in race seven the close brothers novices handicap chase a horse called romana now this is one that we brought in in the um window a couple of a couple of, w- of weeks ago um it hasn't done all that much it would appear but it's a pretty good horse at home this is a very small field it ran well first time out finishing third it's been a bit disappointing a couple of times since then and including one four but it's rated one one eight so it's the second highest rated in the race and most of the horses in that would have gone in this seem to have gone into the golden miller so I think this is a bit of a bit of a weak race, this one, and there's a possibility that we could get a big big run. We'll be concerned about one or two of them in there. Morally the Zafonia for Darren Thompson always looks pretty good, and Zafariah for Darren Thompson as well. Always looks good, and then the one that's called All Looks Good for Josh. Can't ever be discounted, can it? But with a bit of luck, we're hoping that Romana might just pop up and surprise a few people and certainly give us a good run for our money. And she's probably one that's going to be better next season anyway, so that would be something of a bonus. Then once again, we miss out the even number of race and go straight to race number nine, where we've got what most people would probably think is our best chance of the week, certainly our highest rated horse, and that's the seven-year-old novice mare, Alja Flyer, who's won a grade two already this season. Isn't any other option for her other than to go into this grade one? If it had been a three-mile novice handicap, we'd probably been tempted to try and give the weight away or maybe even push her up a furlong or two. The only other option was to try her over hurdles, but she's a much better chaser and she's pretty good and she'll be there or thereabouts. But there are a lot of good horses in this two or three that have won two or even three times. So again, it's going to be it's going to be exciting to see how she does. We're hopeful of a big run and she certainly won't let us down on that mark. Then our big windmill tilt, I suppose, of the week comes in race 11. Again, some people may look at me and say, I've been a bit silly with this, but Cable Cardington has won three times and been second twice this season and it's been running really well in an ideal world once 18 furlongs and there just isn't an 18 furlong race it can get into this week we contemplated running it in the grand annual but it would probably have had top weight if we'd have put it in that and we had a couple of others on better weights that we thought might um, just do a little bit better in that race so the option was to either run capable cardington in this queen mother or run it in the champion hurdle and won well over hurdles last week but my personal opinion is it's a slightly better chaser and I didn't fancy taking on that Unandalish Gashichka so I thought the best bet might be to have a look at the at the Queen Mother Champion chase maybe it doesn't look quite as good a race as it normally normally does and rated at 132 he should be able to give a decent account of himself and he deserves a chance in the big race so that's what we've got then on day one we go with our probably our best hand on day one but we're not expecting too much it'd be nice to get at least one winner throughout the week and we'll certainly know whether we've got much chance of that by the end of day one so the second big feature race of day one then is the queen mother champion chase and that's going up race 11 and Stu, Doug, Gray and myself had a little look at it in a little bit more depth earlier on. The morning tissue prices for the Queen of the Champion Chase. We've got some um, joint favourites. Word to the Wise and Joint Sovereignty at 4 to 1. And we've got Andhar Revere and New Lamb at 6. Comfort Zone at 7. And Selene at 8. Rumba's Last Dance at 9. Shanghai Lily and Capable Cardington at 14. Mr. Tiddlewinks at 22. Franklin Roosevelt and Falkland's Task Force at 33. Pavillon Bury at 66. And Loma Palmer Blaze at 200. Okay, so word to the wise, was that... Uh, that's favourite, isn't it? That's joint favourite, is joint sovereignty. Yeah, tricky with joint sovereignty. I mean, it's only had one run. I mean, it was a G2 event. Yeah, jumped well. Hard to gauge, though. I think by, by the time we get to Cheltenham, it's much better than... Uh, seen horses over 
play for a few weeks gives us an idea. You, you really don't know with John what we're talking about. I mean, it's, it's obviously been laid out purely for this, but um, word to the wise, been, it's had some really good runs of light. I think, uh, I mean, what did it win a couple of weeks back? Over the Victor, I was a group one chase, the Victor Chandler. It was second a couple of races before that, but it started off with winning its first three races of the season. Although, be it grade, grade three events, I think that fall last week was just bad luck. Um, and I, out of that, I will go for, uh, unfortunately, John, I'm going to give the kiss of death to Josh for you with word to the wise. Dog, have you got any ideas what's going to stand up, fall over, or win? Um, I would have said word to the wise would fall, but it did it last week, so. I would say it's probably a shilling. Yeah, there's nothing to leave on in here, is there? No, that's a bit of a surprise. He's not going to do the clean sweep that he did a few years ago. Well, what about you, Gray? What are you like, like to look on? <laughs> well, I like John Soberty, actually, John Morgan's horse. Because John does plan this season for every horse in his table, and he has kept that one back, I think, for a reason. Um, all his horses have been falling, really, so he might fall, but... Hopefully he's standing up. I think Josh has obviously got a good horse there, but I still think Josh out. he's been set, set up in this race and John pisses his horse as well, so that's one for me. He does, but he's, yeah. he's, he's, not, he's not been doing very well this year, I don't think, as well as he normally does. Because once I've commentated on, they either win or fall over. He's always been, I've always thought he was better at the long distance races anyway, so I personally wouldn't touch it at, that, at those sort of places. Yeah, no, I mean, joint, I mean, that joint somebody did beat Word to the Wise in that one race by three quarters of a length, so no, I'm still going for Word to the Wise, though. I don't, I think, like you say, horses better having a couple of runs. Before going to Cheltenham. Right, well, I'm going to I'm going to go for a bit of an outsider, bit of an outsider. It might be a bit of a bit of or maybe a bit of a one that not um, everybody's looked at. It's not much of an outsider. It's only seven to one. But I'm going to go for Comfort Zone because David Robertson always does well at Cheltenham, mm. and that horse is running to form. It won last time, and it's like you say with these these races, isn't it? I mean, that once the it's fallen. Once they've fallen once, you just wonder whether they're going to fall again. Um, uh, the form of John Morgan's horses, I just don't think they're as good as they were. They've got a tendency to fall over. So I wouldn't want to risk that one after just one race. I quite liked the look of your Shanghai Lily. She is a be- better horse of the two of them, but um, I, I, it's been beating handicaps and also I, uh, I like, hope they all fall and she wins, but I think she can make rubber a place, but uh, I don't fancy it winning. No, it's just, I think this is quite an, open, quite an open race, really, because when you've got the, 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 the fancied ones that are capable of falling over and I know it hasn't fallen over yet joint sovereignty but it's only had one attempt and it's so many of John Morgan's horses just don't jump uh, it's it's just it just puts me off that and World Tries has fallen and I mean, there has fallen I don't know I just think I just think comfort zone is probably probably a slightly safer bet if you like um certainly to uh, to, to finish in the frame but having said that having said that it's 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 fallen over itself well capable Carlington is I didn't really want to put Capable Carlington in this race because he's won for me already this season three times and he's been second twice, which is pretty good. I wanted to run him in a grand annual, but he's been absolutely nobbled by that handicapper and he's got far too much (laughs) weight. <laughs> he's got three times because I've novelled him at one three two. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no, the, the truth of the matter is, he's. I was going to put him in that, but he would have been top weight, and I've got two others in that that won't be top weight and won't be at the handicap. I don't think so. I think they've got better chances, and I thought, you know what? He's won three times. He's been second twice. That champion chase doesn't look that brilliant he deserves a day out with the big boys I think the other option because he's a good hurdler as well he won over hurdles last week was to put him in a champion hurdle but I think like quite a lot of other people I just got scared off by that unleashed geschichte and I thought well if I'm in that I'm going for second so let's have a let's have a little bit of a let's have a little bit of a pop at this and see what happens it was either that or running him nowhere else because he couldn't get into the silver cup at Fakenham which was his initial target a few weeks ago Um, obviously couldn't get into the hunters because I've been frozen out of them by the handicapper (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so yeah so I think he'll run a, he'll run a decent race he, he won't win but I'll be happy if he finishes in the first yeah, five or six <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got he's got to be in with a chance he'll definitely beat Loma Palma Blaze anyway risky <laughs> <laughs> risky <laughs> I tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll do you a deal. If he doesn't finish in front of Lower Palmer Blaze, I'll do all the commentaries next week in a Bulgarian accent. Okay, you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said Bulgarian. You can pick anyone you like. Well, probably. No, you just do. You can do them in English. We're happy with that. <laughs> 
<coughs> Usually, so what was what should I start now? Is that, is that I don't even know what a Bulgarian would sound like. Yeah, try pronouncing Josh's horse with a Bulgarian accent. So we've all gone. What, 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 we've all gone for. What have we gone for there? Then so word to the wise for you, Stu. Yep. And yep. joint sovereignty for John. No, hmm. for me. John's not picking it. Oh yeah, we'll do that with yeah, you. For Gray. <laughs> joint sovereignty for Gray. And what, did, what, have you, what have you said, um, Doug? Oh, where's the wise? Rumpa Marble, not half, it was Rumpa Marble Ace. Oh, word for, word for the wise as well. So the meeting gets underway then with the Skybet Supreme Novices Hurdle Race 1. And Stu's going to be commentating on this one for you. And we've got a red hot favourite, haven't we? Red Iron Knights for Leon Van Rensburg is odds on. You don't see many odds on favourites at Cheltenham. But this, obviously, I'm hoping to get the punters off to a great start. There's one or two in here that actually look as though they could give it something to, something to think about. It's rated a good £20 higher than anything else. But there's one or two others that have got a little bit of decent form and have won a few times. Silent but Deadly's a winner, Carbonair's a winner, Sir Michael Kane is a winner, Bad Vossler's a winner, Isnalos is a winner, and so too is Sadar Classical down the bottom. So, as good as Red Iron Knights might be, and as hot as Leon Van Rensburg's form is at the moment, I won't necessarily be wanting to take a shade of odds on, or even two to one on, which I can see at the moment. Two to one on, and an opening race at a Cheltenham Festival, I would think would be not the best bet in the world. And if I was going to go for one in this, I think I might well be tempted to go for Bad Vosla for Darren Thompson who always seems to do well. He's also got his Nalaz as well. I couldn't really split those two I don't think. One or two people will be thinking they've got a chance of turning over the favourite in the first. Leon of course will be hoping to get off to an absolute flyer. Well that brings us on to race three which is the first of the big handicaps on day one and it's the Ultima over three miles. A few of the horses here that should do well. The top weight is going to be the 170 rated Come Shamed which is one for David Robertson. Winner of the King George VI chase back in week seven. Turned up at the Hennessy, didn't get over the first fence. Came back last week and won the Group 2 Gemman chase. Now I feel off of 170 might just be a little bit too far. 12 stone might be a bit too much to carry there. The other one I'd like to have a quick look is Kaida Carla, rated now 130 for James Shea. Has a chance, might be a little bit weighted out now with its win last week over the Fulbright Gold Challenge of 111. Now go, now comes into this of 130, might find the weight a little bit too much. We've got David Thompson's Fan Lope. Also has a chance here. Came third last week in the Denman to come shamed. But prior to that, won uh, the Peter Marsh back in week 8. And the Silver Cup back in week 7, both handicaps. But running now off of 152 again might find it just a little bit too too much weight to carry around this three miles. John Morgan, winner of this last year, brings Rose Moss, saddles him up. Um, not done too well. Won his maiden chase over an extended three miles, three mile two. Had a couple of three mile runs recently. Peter Marsh, where he didn't finish anywhere. And the King George VI, he came six. So not sure... He's three miles might be a little bit too short for him. The other one on the card that looks quite ominous is right down the bottom of the card, which is uh, Martin Leedham's Astro, Astro Charm Glances. A winner last week won the Sky Bet of 116. Comes in here 20 pounds higher now, 136, but but still could have a chance here. Won a couple of uh, handicap chases, won a Group 2 handicap chase back on week 8. Came third last week in the Denman. He dropped a further fifteen pounds, so one hundred and thirty might be there or thereabouts. So if I was to stick my neck out, I think I would go for Astro Astro Charm glances for Martin Leadham. Then we move on to race five, the Glen Far Class Handicap Chase, the three mile seven event. There's plenty of these horses near uh, will be national entries, I'm sure. There's a couple I'd like to have a quick look at. Obviously, first you've got uh, Darren Thompson's Watergate. Not showed a great deal of form. His best has been a second in a handicap chase off 108. It was over three miles and five furlongs. So going a little bit further, runs off 120 here. Has a chance. Then we've got uh, I Do, I Do, I Do, which is a Graham Clutterbuck's horse. Had a good bit of form. Came second and third in his last third in the Welsh National. That was obviously over the three mile five, going a little bit further here, over the three mile sevens. Sorry, came third in the Welsh National of 115. Comes in here off 132. Might find the, the extra 15 pounds he's carrying might just be a little bit too much. Then we've got Roach for Paul O'Neill. Sitting uh, 
off 143, so he's going to be carrying top weight. But his form's pretty good. He's had a couple of seconds and a third in his last, uh, sorry, a second and a couple of thirds in his last couple of races. Likes the conditions soft. Obviously, consistent horse probably will front run, as most of Paul O'Neill's do. But top weight might just be a little bit too much, but you never know over the Glen Farkless course across country here. And then the last one I'll have a quick look at would be, uh, and the last one I'll quickly take a look at is my own horse, Born to Perform, uh, came in at uh, the upload. He's uh, not really done particularly well. He's there for the national. He came fifth over his maiden, over four miles. Turned up at the West Wales National Handicap. Came fourth in that. Goes over the Glen Farkless here. Was hopeless in the Moors Million last week over the extended four mile four. It's a good chance here. Comes in at a reasonable weight off 122. But he's really my national hope. So uh, if I had to stick my nose out here, I think we'll go for. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do for Graham Clutterbuck. That well known ABBA song, which is obviously what the horse was named after. The Coast Brothers uh, Novice Handicap Chase, which is race seven. Just a fairly small field here of just, I think it's eight runners going. There's a couple in here to have a quick look at. I mean, eruption for Craig Beckwith. Better hurdler. The chases. Uh, he tried to qualify for the Starters Always Champion Chase last week. Came in 10th off 101. Comes in here 93. So has a chance here. Dropped down 8 pounds. But obviously is a better hurdler. The other one to look at is the first of uh, the ones to mention for Josh Sutherland. Is all looks good. A winner way back in week three over two and a half miles, which was a handicap chase off 104. Now comes in here off 115. You'd imagine uh, not a lot of form with a lot of the horses here. But if I if I was to pick one, I'd probably go for all looks good for Josh Sutherland. Another winner on the winner board. And then that would move us on to race nine, which is the RSA. Some quality horses in here over the just three miles and a half a furlong. Again, one for the novices. The three at the top of the pile, including When the Demon Comes for Joshua Sutherland, Kentucky Fried for Leon Van Rensburg, and Shao Reputation for John Morgan. That one's coming in here after winning its only two starts. Won the Ryman's back on week six. Won its maiden back on week one. Obviously been left out for this. Obviously has a great chance. When the Demon Comes for Josh, again been running well. Won a, G2, won a couple of G2 novices. Won his maiden. Won a novice chase. Not turned up at a G1 event yet. So uh, has a chance. Leon's uh, Kentucky Fried won a G1 novice event back on week seven. So one with uh, form at this level. And the other little one down the bottom of the pile is Dobretts of Daniel French. Rated 130. Been winning uh, some handicaps. So a bit of a step up here. Um, won its previous two races. Also won a Hunter's Chase way back on week five. Might find this just a little bit too hot for it. But as I imagine it's going to be between the top three. As I said, I had to stick my nose out. I think John's shall reputation. Should get his hat-trick here. Good luck. And then finally, my last race call of the day will be the Queen Mother Champion Chase over the two miles. We've got some good horses in here. See the 170 rated word to the wise for Joshua Sutherland. Must have every chance here. Although a fall the last time out, which uh, wouldn't have gone down too well for Josh. Um, but prior to that, uh, won the Victor Chandra week eight. A couple of seconds prior to that, if we go right back, one of, you know, it started off its career here with three straight wins. Got every chance in this. Although Andahar Revere came in at uh, the upload, won its group, won its opening event, the Tingle Creek, a Group One chase, not uh, done so well. Fit to charm, but came nowhere. Last week turned up a Group Two chase, came second, didn't really find anything left over the two mile one, so might find this bit better to his liking, a furlong less. So between those, I mean, joint sovereignty of John Morgan as well comes in here. Only one run, one that John has obviously laid out for this event. Just won the Desert Orchid Group 2 event back on week 7. Laid out, looks good. So I'd imagine it will be between Words of the Wise and Aha Revere and joint sovereignty. Leon doesn't have one in here. So a uh, good chance of somebody else to pick up a win. And that will be my last race for the day. And I know Martin will be calling home the year of the National Hunt Chase, which is our final race of the day. 
The second race on day one is the Racing Post Arkle Chase. It's a Group 1 for novices over two miles, of course, and 11 will face the starter with the red-hot favourite. The top one, the monster for Joshua Southern, rated at 175. This one is streets ahead of the others, according to the form book, and he's also streets ahead of the others, according to the betting as well. And he might even go off a shades of odds on. You can just about get even money at this moment in time. The second one in the betting is Chess from the Leon van Rensburg stable and that one has got a bit of a chance but I wouldn't really fancy its chances of turning the tables on the monster who looks to be pretty much living up to his name White Knight been a little bit disappointing having failed to complete three of the last four times carbon neutral for Graham Clutterbuck is a nice chaser but not probably not quite up to this class Lapazano for Darren Thompson is the second highest rated but it's difficult to see past Joshua Sutherland and the monster for the racing post Arkle race number six is the David Nicholson Mayor's Hurdle, and this one's been elevated to Group 1 status in recent years, and once again we've got a standout horse in this in Lana Del Rey for Joshua Sutherland again, who looks set to have a good opening day. Lana Del Rey is rated a good 28, 27, 28 pound higher than her nearest rival. Three of those dreams are still Dunnery's Targi and Al Call Light. But you can see the bookies are pretty much in favour of Lana Del Rey. Two to one might look a little bit generous at the end of the day. The one they seem to think that's got the best chance of turning turning that one over, though, is uh, Esther Tide Jubilate. A horse that comes with a bit of a rattle late on, but hasn't done a great deal in its last three starts. But the uphill finish, of course, will definitely help that one. Moving on then to the Neptune Hurdle, which is race eight. The Neptune Investment Novice Hurdle, two mile and five novice. This was formerly known as the Bear in Bingham, of course. And this one looks a little bit more competitive with only a few pounds on the official ratings separating the top two or three with reap what you sow for Joshua Sutherland winner last time out stop messing around for Leon Van Rensburg has been impressive in quite a few of its races so too is his second run of white ships and as you can see the book is about a bit cagey this one with co-favourites reap what you sow stop messing around and sins of the angels all at three to one white ships at four to one and Del Tower Martino at seven to one might well be the outside value in that race because that one runs pretty well most weeks and the trainer states that it loves Cheltenham and the, the ground and the trip are perfect. On to race 10 which is a big handicap the Coral Cup handicap hurdle and again once again competitive looking field top three at least all look as though they've got a really good really good chance and possibly could have gone on into the group races one or two down the list look like they might be well in Woodlands Flower might be on a good mark so might Satonia Demure but once again it's Joshua Sutherland who seems to be the one who's holding all the aces here with Angel on my Sholu there and Archangel the two that you should probably be most interested in and Angel on my Sholu there is just about the favourite at four to one with Archangel at seven to one you'd probably think that that one might be the better the better value but looking at that as uh, it's a wide open looking race but you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't go far wrong having a forecast on the Joshua Sutherland pair I wouldn't have thought the final race of the day is the Marathon 4 Mile, the year of the National Hunt Chase. You may have heard earlier on, Stu Gray quite fancies his chances in this one with Swift Breeze. He's run one decent race out of out of four so far with a good second a couple of weeks ago, but not really done anything to set the world on fire. This, to be honest, looks like probably the weakest race on day one, as you'd pretty much expect. And it's really wide open, not now, never for James Shea. He's the only one in the field that's won in the last four races, and I wouldn't mind him. I wouldn't be surprised to see that one running well. In a normal year, she'd be looking at Crossmaster for John Morgan, but his chases are struggling with the fences, and I would think, looking at that, not now, never, and Isabel Reform look as though they would be the two to focus on in that particular race. And once again, the bookies seem to think that Isabel Reform is just about the favourite, so the value for me in that one there is definitely going to be not now, never, at the likely odds. Okay, so that's um, that's that. So that's the first day. Are you missing? Gonna miss doing the commentating this year, Doug? No. <laughs> okay, thanks to everybody then for their input today. Gray, Stu, Doug, and Leon, and Craig, and Josh, and Vinny for compiling the odds, and James Shea for letting us have a look round his horses later. So good luck to everybody today. Stu's making his way as we speak towards the commentary box to commentate on the first race and we'll see you all again for another preview show tomorrow